Hello, future mate here. Uh, they made that just finished editing the video. Didn't realize I would get it out by Halloween. As you can see, I also decorated my room up here. So yeah, have a happy Halloween. Hello and welcome to Review Hot Seat, the show where you truly review stuff for the sole purpose of entertainment. Today's game is Spelunky, which I only recently started playing, but became fond of it pretty quick. I don't want to waste too much of your life, so let's begin. Spelunky is a game about spelunkying and dying a horrible amount of times. Released in 2008? What? Turns out there are two versions of Spelunky, one called Spelunky Classic and one called Spelunky HD. Spelunky Classic was made in Game Maker and the game was released in late December in 2008, though Spelunky's website states it was released in 2009. Strange. The game was acclaimed by both critics and normal people alike for its great game design. And such, a few years later, in 2013, they released Spelunky HD with some notable enhancement in terms of AI, movement, sound design and graphics. This game was also a massive hit as you can expect. Today Spelunky has a cult following and that following is only growing after the release of Spelunky 2 in September, which is technically Spelunky 3 if we count Spelunky Classic as Spelunky 1. I'm going to be talking about the first game, but we'll mention Spelunky 2 along the way. Spelunky is essentially a roguelike game, but not entirely randomly generated. The game has pre-designed areas that the creator Derek Yu made. He managed to incorporate these already made elements into a level making engine, thus creating one of the best roguelike level generators in my opinion at least. Of course, things like this will happen, because the engine does randomly generate stuff around the pre-made areas. This game has its own place on the difficulty meter. Like, have you ever heard games compared to Dark Souls? Like Dark Souls of platformers and such? Well, they all compare it to Dark Souls, because nothing, NOTHING reaches the difficulty of Spelunky! Alright mate, if it's so hard, how was the gameplay? Yeah, I'm about to show you that. Bodygum the game will give you its own story building cutscene, the rest of the story is told through your adventure. The story in uh, quotations, because a roguelike game you will be stuck on the first two stages 90% of the time. There are numerous traps and hazards that will stop you in your track fast if you don't pay attention. Even some monsters can one-shot you if you're not careful. It also doesn't help that you start with 4 HP. You would assume most things do one damage and that would whittle you down slowly over time. Nah. Arrows do 2 damage and stuns you, giving enemies time to get to in 1 points of damage or outright kill you in the spot. Ticket traps insta-kill you if you have below 5 HP. You might want to do your best to avoid taking damage altogether. Think about how you approach each area and room. Uh, prioritize mobs and there's a decent chance you will make it out without taking damage. Going in without a plan will most likely result in you at least taking one damage and at the worst even dying. Most enemies might only do one damage but even taking one damage can severely impact your run. Not to mention the countless retarded ways you can make the situation even worse for yourself. You would be surprised on how many stupid goddamn ways you can kill yourself in. Fuck! Game doesn't need the fucking monsters if you do the dirty work yourself. Thankfully, the game's movement is quite literally tuned to perfection, so the damage you take will be because of your own fault and rarely do the level generation. Seriously, the extent of your retardation will be tested on a major scale in this game. So ironically, you most likely want to be very patient with your movement and how you choose to interact with your environment even though there's a mechanic for you to hurry the fuck up, which take the form of this ghost, which will insta-kill you no matter the circumstance, even if you have invincibility frames. So you know you're dealing with something powerful if it denies invincibility frames. This ghost appears after you spend two and a half minutes in a single level and will chase you down until you either die or escape the level. But if you're the brave son of a bitch kind of person, you can use the ghost to quotation ghost gems to get them to turn into diamonds. It's a very high risk, high reward mechanic. Alright mate, 
How do you defend yourself from these death threats? Because you've been babbling about them for minutes, but said nothing about defense. Ah uh, yes, time to address your mighty arsenal of weapons. <laughs> Your primary weapon is the whip, which has a considerable delay on its damage and hitbox, and will require you to attack early to hit an enemy. Your secondary weapon is the rope, of all things. Yes, this thing actually does damage, if you use it on enemies above you. Pretty interesting if you ask me. This is basically everything in your arsenal. The rest you need to acquire from your surroundings, such as rocks, skulls, arsenal of may or may not be deadly weapons, stunned enemies and a lot more. But yeah, whip and rope are your basic tools, then we get to your meat of your accessories. The bomb. The bomb is a useful tool if you're in a sticky situation while exploring. Useful in a sense that you can blow up shit with it. The bomb is the most powerful tool you possess and it will wipe out basically any life form in seconds if you use it offensively. Paired up with the paste you get from sp uh, huge spiders, this right up there with the laser gun you get from the mothership. Though it should be noted that bombs and ropes are found in limited quantities, so you might want to use them if you can't do anything otherwise. When starting the game you only have 4 of each, 4 bombs and 4 ropes. You can also buy these resources from the shop, which I'll be talking about later. But you can also find them in crates littered around the level, if you're lucky. Life forms. But where do they live? <laughs> Time to adjust these areas of Spelunky. It's gonna be a long one, so prepare yourself. The game consists of 5 areas. Every area has 4 levels and no, only 2 areas have bosses at the end, the last 2. Each level in an area, except 1-1, has a chance to generate a shop. Every level will also contain a damsel, which you can rescue for an extra life. As a note, the damsel have to be alive to receive the life. There are also idols laying around. Each idol worth will scale with your level progression from 5,000 to 25,000 at the very last level. Idols can be sold to shops or can be brought to the end of the level. The first area, the mines. You begin in the mines, fairly friendly place with bats, spiders, occasional scorpions, skeletons and cavemen around the end. There are spikes and arrow traps littered around, and explosives, which as you can expect are dangerous. This area will always contain the U-Jet Eye, an item that lets you see gems in the wall and will help you find the black market in the jungle. The levels through 1-2 to 1-4 has a chance to generate this item in the form of a chest with a golden lock. The key to the chest will always appear on the same level as the chest. It's the matter of you finding it though. The second area, the jungle. After you get through the mines, you will arrive in the lush green jungle. This area is pretty much considered to be one of the hardest areas in the game, though it's sudden difficult to spike. There are ticket traps, way more spikes, uh, these man-eating planks, Monka. Ranyas, Tiki man, FROGS! There's also a chance for a beehive to spawn, which will include a queen bee that drops honey that will give you 4 health. Of course, bees are quite dangerous, so approaching uh, with a whip is a no-go. Use either a boomerang that you acquire from Tiki man, or or a shotgun that you can buy or steal from the shops. The jungle will always have a black market entrance in it, though without the huge eye it's much harder to find than usual. We'll spend a long time here if you're new to the game. Just take your time here, those sticky traps will cause many frustrating hours. Third area, the ice caves. Filled with yetis. Aliens? For some reason, there's also this mammoth looking creature which shoots freeze bolts? Uh, yeah, those freeze bolts essentially mean if you get caught in it, game over. Good luck getting out of fucking ice when you're broken to a thousand pieces. These yetis, if you get close to them, will throw you. Yes, literally grabs you and throws you. Like an angry old woman throws a child. Jumping on an alien will make them parachute out of their ship. Careful though, the ship explodes on contact and the alien can seal your damage. This area is considered to be a break world, which gives you a bit of a time to relax until... No! This area is where you will say, uh, yeah, so I exit button. So to start off, there's lava. Insta kills you if touched. Not surprised there. Anu fucking Ubis. What 
the fuck are you doing here? He shoots psychic blasts that will instant kill you if you don't have a ridiculously high health. Mummies, which will bar flies. Listen. I don't even fucking know if we're in Egypt or something, because this is clearly not sandstone. We're the scorpion flight things. What is this? Hawkman? Uh, they jump now. Cross traps. We'll slide to your current location in the hopes that they'll crush you, just like my high school bullies. The temple is the home of basically every creature besides the ice cave's inhabitants, so it will throw everything at you before you can fight the big boss of the area. Olmec. Olmec is this fat gold thing. Thing being the best word to describe this. Olmec will crush you, or will attempt to crush you if you're directly below him. He will also occasionally spawn enemies during his storms, and these can be basically any enemy, so I can't help you. You'll need to get Olmec into the love below the level, then you're done. Game over. Good job, you completed Spelunky. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> you already know that there's a fifth stage. Literal fucking hell. Getting to hell is an adventure on its own. Get the huge eye from the mines, get to the black market in the jungle, steal or buy the unk there, get to the ice caves and die in the level that has the moai head, respawn in the moai head to get the head jet, get to the temple and kill Anubis on the first level and carry a scepter to the second on the level of the temple, get to the city of gold, then retrieve the Necronomicon, steal the Necronomicon that will trigger to spawn Anubis too, the reckoning has come. Use the Necronomicon's laugh to determine where the hell entrance is in the Olmec area, lead Olmec there and make Olmec fall below the entrance so you can enter it. Ah! You can probably imagine what waits for you here. Vampires, these zombie dudes? Imps that they will throw magma man at you. Devils that charge at you. Succubi that will disguise as damsels. Huh. L and lava. On the fourth level of hell, you will find King Yama, Lord of the Underworld. Just stick some fucking bombs on him and he's dead in seconds. For the five linearly available stages, there are also five hidden stages, which are the Black Market, Haunted Castle, Alien Mothership, the Worm, and the City of Gold. The Black Market. You can get to it with the Ujitai that you will get in the first area. It will blink if you're close to its entrance in the jungle. Haunted Castle. It only appears in the dead or restless special event stages. It spawns below this king grave. Mothership. You can get to it at uh, 3-4. Its entrance will always either spawn on the right or left side of the level. City of Gold. City of Gold is a bit more complicated. It's basically every step for a hell run. Get the Ujitai, get the Black Market, steal the Young, kill yourself in the ice caves, get the head jet, go to the temple, kill Anubis, carry his scepter to the second floor, and find the entrance to the City of Gold. Are you still with me here? <laughs> because I'm starting to go see now. Sure, all these areas exist, but what makes them whole? Ah uh, yes, the music. has such a fucking underrated soundtrack. Oh. Each area except a few has three tracks not including special events and hidden areas such are dead or restless. The soundtrack is very much commendable and I enjoy more tracks in it. Truly a great soundtrack. Now in the case of Spelunky 2, I feel like the soundtrack hits just a teeny tiny bit different. Instead of variety in the music choices, there's only one music track for each area. Man, why? This is basically the only time I can say Spelunky 2 is worse than its predecessor in terms of music. Because it does get a bit tiring to listen to the same track over and over. It could use some more variety. I'm not meaning to bash Spelunky 2's soundtrack. I think it's just as awesome as Spelunky 1's. But the lack of variety does drag it down a bit. Alright, what did I forget? I know I forgot something here. Chad, what did I forget? The shops. Oh fuck! Yes, this does indeed deserve its in, uh, own segment in the video. Shops are a vital part of your adventure. Basically, this is where you can get your most helpful items, such as bombs, weapons, other items, and the all oh, worshipped jet. Your biggest enemy in the shop isn't the price of an item, rather you resolve to steal the said items. You see, stealing is a mechanic in the game, which pays big, but will make your life so much harder. Shopkeepers aren't fond of shoplifters, and thus they are armed with shotguns that will kill, kill you instantly if you don't have really high health. And once you shoplift, there are these pests will pursue you until literal hell to get you. At the end of every level following your robbery, will spawn an armed shopkeeper to hunt you. 
these fuckers are faster than Usain Bolt tenfold. They also get up faster than you, so if you get stunned, you're done. Restart the fucking level now. They also throw you around, which will deal one damage per throw, but let's be honest, you're already dead by then. Stealing is recommended, but not required to beat the game. You can perfectly beat it without stealing. Alright, just one last segment. Kali Altars. See this? This is a Kali Altar. This is a powerful tool and something you may not want to mess with. Kali Altars are really useful. You can sacrifice damsels here, uh, stunned enemies and dead bodies, and Kali will give you an item in turn for your devotion. I'm not going to go into too much detail in the Kali Altars because there's actually a pretty good video made by Israel Larg. You should check that video out, I will link it in the description. You will know everything about uh, Kelly Altars that way. He also have many uh, more tutorials on his channel about Spelunky, so if you're interested in the game, check them out. I would also like to apologize for the long wait between videos recently. All of last year's schoolwork is shuffled into our current curriculum, so we're essentially doing last year's schoolwork while still progressing in this year's material at the same time. <sighs> oh well. Thank you for watching the very first episode of Review Hot Seat, technically the second if you counted the Minecraft review. And I'll be back with a video soon enough, I I think. I don't quote me on that though. So thank you, and goodbye.